all over breaking news from overnight developing situation near Dixie Highway and Lake Worth Beach. A lot of law enforcement's been on the scene. We have the very latest. Today marks one week since a Palm Beach County a teen died after going for a bike ride. We'll tell you what's going on today to honor that young man and why a former detective tells us someone must know something about how he died. Gas prices keep going up, especially here in Palm Beach County. I'll show you how Governor DeSantis is aiming at helping drivers out right here in Florida. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday of a big holiday week. I'm Matt Lincoln. I'm Ashley Glass. On a holiday week, the days kind of all blur together. You know, oh, thank no. you for the, the reminder. Countdown. It's Tuesday. Two days from away was... from Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. I know what day it is. How's it looking, Zach, outside? Uh, outside's pretty nice right now. We've got high pressure and control back out through the Tennessee River Valley. And it's not only for us. I mean, really a good... I'd say 75, 80% of the nation is good to go today. There are a couple of uh, trouble spots we'll be watching. Uh, the Great Lakes back out through upstate New York. You can see those winds coming off the lake. So we are watching the lake effect snow machine cranking today. Also some gusty winds up in New York and across the state of Florida. We'll talk about how that impacts your travel forecast and our next storm system taking shape back out through the Pacific Northwest. That's coming up in a bit, but Today, it's all about this ridge of high pressure directing that northerly flow, cooling us off and drying us out. Look at our water vapor satellite. A lot of orange here. It has been a while since we've seen dry air return to the sunshine state, but we are certainly going to live up to that name later on today. It's also cooling us off. We're in the upper 50s right now for St. Lucie, Indian River, and Okeechobee counties. Low 60s for Palm Beach and Martin County. Yes, this is a good 10, nearly 15 degrees colder than where we were at this point in time yesterday. I don't expect us to really drop any more from this point forward. I think we'll slowly start to warm up 60s by 9 a.m. and daytime highs today around 70 to 72 degrees, depending on where you are. Ample sunshine, guys. We'll talk about the one other threat, though. That's coming up in a bit. All right, Zach, thank you. We are following breaking news this morning. We Heavy this program, police so activity in Lake Worth Beach. Beach. Yeah, this is right off 7th Avenue and North Dixie Highway. It's where we find our Kara Duffy reporting live. Uh, Kara, what do we know at this point? The scene's been mostly cleared out behind you. What's going on? Well, Matt Ashley, right now, deputies are being pretty tight-lipped when it comes to what exactly unfolded here overnight. As you mentioned, the scene now a lot more clear than it was when we first got out here. But if you take a look in the distance here, there is still uh, maybe two or three cop cars, uh, sheriff's deputies' vehicles in the distance with their lights on. Now, a majority of the uh, action has been here at this intersection that's at Dixie Highway and 7th Ave uh, in Lake Worth. When we first got here, we saw uh, dozens of vehicles from PBSO. As you can see, one of them just pulling out from the scene now. And during that time, uh, we know that the PBSO bomb squad van was here. We also saw uh, the helicopter circling. Neighbors nearby said all of that commotion started shortly after 2 o'clock this morning. And then deputies had blocked off uh, this entire block really here at the intersection which began at the Sitco gas station. That was their uh, starting point where they were kind of set up throughout the morning and then it stretched back towards, uh, I believe, more residential areas in the distance. And that's where we are still seeing uh, those flashing lights from the vehicles out there right now. But as far as what exactly happened here, we're still working uh, to get more information. We have reached out to the spokesperson for the sheriff's office and are waiting to hear back. As soon as we get an update, we will be sure to bring you the latest information. Matt Ashley. 604 right now this morning, Palm Beach County deputies have arrested a man accused of shooting and killing a man in Lake Worth Beach last week. Detectives say Francie Joseph shot and killed a man who was on his way back home from shopping with his mother. Detectives say a group of people in a car stopped in the road near their apartment complex. As the victim was driving around the stopped car, police say Joseph fired his gun, killing the man. Joseph now faces multiple charges, including first degree murder. And this morning, the Justice Department and more than a dozen families of the Parkland school shooting victims have reached a settlement. The Justice Department will pay nearly $130 million to 40 survivors and the victims' families over claims that the department failed to investigate tips that warned about the shooter months before the shooting. 17 students and staff members were killed by Nicholas Cruz on Valentine's Day nearly four years ago. Cruz pleaded guilty last month and is facing the death penalty.
heart goes out to the family, especially the mother, because I have two boys as well. A neighbor there calling the death of 14 year old Palm Beach Gardens boy heartbreaking. And today, family and friends, they will gather to remember Ryan Rogers, who was found dead after going for a bike ride about a week ago. Yeah, there will be a celebration of life memorial gathering in North Palm Beach this afternoon. Police say they found Ryan and his bike near a sidewalk on Central Boulevard at the I-95 overpass in Palm Beach Gardens. Investigators have ruled his death a homicide. The exact cause of death has not yet been released. But investigators say it was not traffic related. Our Terry Hornstein's been following this story. So Terry, CBS 12 News just spoke to some retired detectives trying to learn more about what could help solve this case. What are they saying? Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done here. Those detectives say an important part, though, of this case, scouring the area for surveillance video that may have gotten the possible suspects on camera. You know, we did tell you last week when we were out at the scene, there are cameras out there, but not pointing in the exact direction of where Ryan's body was found. So at this point, Palm Beach Gardens police have not yet released a cause of death for Ryan, but did rule his death a homicide. Today will mark one week since the boy's body was found, yet still no answers as to how he died or who did it. Right now, the case is in the hands of detectives who have the job of finding the person responsible for this awful tragedy. CBS 12 spoke to some retired detectives in our area who say there is a lot of work to be done here. Somebody has seen him or some technology has seen him or her. So um, the idea is that they that they look at all those resources and they try and narrow it down 90 percent of the time somebody does something like this somebody else knows it. somebody else knows about it or they suspect that they did it and that somebody knows something detectives will also look at phone records social media accounts to see who ryan was talking and texting with they will also look in the area for locals who have been involved with crimes against children now another big part of this case looking at the bicycle which was found on the side of that road with ryan ryan's mother who has made several posts on facebook about her son's disappearance and death posted over the weekend the family is struggling with this homicide finding and still trying to process how anyone could have done this to her son. His funeral is scheduled for later on this afternoon. All right, Terry, 608's the time. This morning, the man who police say plowed his car into a Christmas parade, killing five people, hurting dozens more, set to make his first court appearance. Yeah, police say the suspect was involved in a domestic disturbance and ran away before police arrived. Yeah, we see it on video, too, red SUV, blowing through barricades, speeding down the parade route Sunday night near Milwaukee. Driver managed to dodge a police officer who shot at the car trying to slow it down. The car was later found less than a mile from the parade and the suspect was taken into custody. Now, Sam Kerrigan here is back with us at the live desk following those developments this morning. Sam, this suspect has a long criminal history. That's right, Matt and Ashley. Police identified 39-year-old Daryl Brooks, you see right here as the suspect, and they say he intentionally drove through those barricades at the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Now, the Waukesha Police Chief says there's no evidence this was a terrorist incident, but the suspect, does have a number of violent past felonies. Brooks criminal history dates back to 1999. Last year, he was charged with three felony gun charges. And in a domestic abuse incident just earlier this month, court documents show Brooks intentionally ran over his child's mother with his vehicle. He posted a $1,000 bail on November 11th, a bail the Milwaukee County District Attorney called inappropriately low. Now, Brooks is facing five counts of first-degree intentional homicide for the Christmas parade, in addition to several other charges. This morning, we know those who died range in age from 52 years old to 81 years old, and among the nearly 50 people injured, almost half of them were children as young as three. Matt. Uh, Sam, you know, this morning security has now become a pri big priority for some parade and festival organizers right here in South Florida. Wellington's 37th annual holiday parade organizers tell us there will be extra deputies along the route. Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw says deputies plan to provide the parade the same level of security it once gave former President Trump. I'm not faulting anybody, but you know, what happens to some of these jurisdictions, especially the smaller ones, you know, they get lulled into a false sense of security because they haven't had to really have high profile visitors like, like we have here. The Wellington Holiday Parade starts at the original Wellington Mall and makes its way south to the amphitheater. Forest Hill Boulevard will be shut down in both directions. 
Also, the side roads will be closed and secured with barricades, cars and patrols. That parade is December 12th. 611 now, I want to take a live look from Palm Beach International Airport, where it's expected to get a lot busier as we get closer to Thanksgiving. Transportation Security Administration estimates they will screen more than 20 million people nationwide from this past Friday to the Sunday after Thanksgiving. But the weather, of course, could affect your travel plans. That is always a concern. We're going to check in with Zach just a little later on with your travel forecast. Well, if you're hitting the roads for Thanksgiving, pay it. The pump is prodigious. Yeah, millions of Floridians are expected to pay the most expensive Thanksgiving gas prices in eight years. According to AAA, national gas average in Florida is $3.35. In all our local counties, prices are above that. In Palm Beach County, we're looking at $3.49. Go to our Madeline Montgomery. She's reporting live at a gas station in Palm Beach Gardens right now. Maddie, any hope these numbers will go down soon? Matt and Ashley prices are still definitely above average here. I'm in Palm Beach Gardens at a shell at North Lake and Military. We just filled up our tank. It was $54 for almost 14 gallons of gas, and that's because we're about 30 cents above average. The county average, that is, for $3.79 a gallon. But the governor says he is trying to fix these numbers, sadly not before the holidays, but for next year, and he just made that announcement this week. So what the governor is proposing is about a billion dollars in gas taxes breaks. He's already talked to several CEOs from gas stations in the state like Wawa and Bucky's who agree to cut costs along with the tax cut. If this happens, he says that'll save a family with two vehicles an average of $200 in six months. Well, we have folks that are getting hammered by the rising gas prices, and so we're here to do something about it. He insists the cuts won't affect Florida's ability to pay for roads and other infrastructure and will not apply to the aviation fuel tax. And the governor will lay out a more detailed plan next month. And then he's going to propose this in the next legislative session, which starts in January. Reporting live in Palm Beach Gardens, Madeline Montgomery, CBS 12 News. All right, Maddie, a lot more ahead to get you ready for this Tuesday morning. Kyle Rittenhouse speaking publicly for the first time since his acquittal. And he's, well, he'll tell you what he said. He was thinking right before he shot and killed two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's coming up next.